Welcome back, everybody, to Larry's Fountain Pen, and I'm Larry, the pen bug guy. Today I want to re-review a fountain pen by Cross. I've had some emails that some folks would like me to do another review on it. I feel this pen really gets underrated because of its slick chrome body which I found to be no problems for me so let me get it out of my 12 pin pin case Mr. Announcer from W. Kiffin and here is the pin case so let me get this one out I just got the pin back today it went to uh, Cross for some repairs. And, you know, one thing I'm going to give Cross is a double A+. Plus. Cross stands behind their name. I don't care how old your pen is, they'll take care of it. I had to send a pen back that I got, what, back in the 60s, 70s? And uh, it wasn't working. Send it in. They send me another one. So... They're really just some good folks to do business with. They're the kind of folks from back in the day when they say they'll do something, they mean what they do. The word is your bond. They mean what they say. So that's a good thing. Here is the cross fountain pen with the gold-plated beautiful hardware on the chrome finish. Uh, on the top of the band, it has cross. And the finial chrome, uh, chrome plated uh, uh, matching the band. Gold plated, rather, matching the band. I beg my pardon. And then you come down the barrel, there's another little uh, gold band to give it a nice accent touch. This is a really nice fountain pen. Okay, so immediately people are going to say, I don't like that pen. It's too slick. My fingers uh, will slide on it or it gets fingerprints. Well, then this pen's not for you. But this pen is for the folks that like a nice, elegant, well-made fountain pen. <clears throat> I've used cross for many moons now. And I've always been pleased with them. So let's unpull the cap. And it does pose. For me, this is perfect. This is how I would use this pen. I prefer my pens to post if they can. That's how I've always been. Some people just don't like it. Well, that's cool. This is me. And uh, so we'll go down the barrel. And there's no really step off at all when you get into the grip. Uh, the, the grip section. It's uh, I have small fingers and, you know, it can accommodate big sausage, chunky down uh, fingers. Some people may tend to hold their pen up here. I hold mine down here. So the... Uh, the pen, before I go into anything else, I'll give you the dimensions real quick. The length of the pen capped is 138.8 uh, millimeters. The widest point of the cap is 10.8 millimeters. And the widest point of the barrel is 9.4 millimeters. And the grip's going to vary because the grip, grip is a little wider on top. And then when it slims down, it gets a little less. So about 8.2 on the grip at the bottom. And then back up on top around in here is about a 9.2. So 
you come on down the grip and then again you find the attractive gold band over the grip. I, I do like that gold finish look. And here is this beautiful nib. It's not a big nib, it's a small nib, but it's a powerful nib. I, I like the details that uh, Cross has done with his nib. And it has Cross, seven fifty, eighteen k, and it has the little Cross logo as you see right there. The barrel unscrews and there's your converter and it is a cross converter and we got a paper town because we're going to do something different here in a minute. It unscrews and screws in. But now let's take it to the next level. We're going to make this pin into a roller ball. And here is the roller ball. And this one is a cross 0 0.7 millimeter. And it's probably black. And it's got a little tit on the top of the point to keep it from drying out. You just get your roller ball because they send you uh, another part to insert the roller ball in. Very simple. And then you get that same barrel. You put it on there. Screws on. And cap it. And now you have a roller ball and you can always put your nib back in here to keep it safe and secure so that's kind of interesting I like that feature on cross it comes in very handy so let's get back to the fountain pen I really do enjoy this fountain pen. There's some people that don't enjoy it. Well, this pen is for the people that enjoy a fine writing instrument, that enjoy a cross fountain pen. Cross has been around for decades. And for one reason why they're around is because how well their pen's made. And they come in different colors. And, you know, they, they stand behind their warranties. I am a living proof of that. I must have sent three or four pins back to Cross, and they took care of it for me. Real nice people. So, now let's go ahead and do a writing sample. And I'll pull out the old Rhodia dot grid. And we'll do some writing. And here we go. Right, there you go. There, uh, there were no bad stars. Uh, the ink flow was consistent. And I'm using the Robert Orster, one of my favorite all-time soda pop blue. It's a nice nib. Fast writing. And 
Yeah, no problems at all. Let's check for wetness. And it's a wet pen. Cross pen. So, I am trying to put some fingerprints or smudges on this pen. And I really don't see any. The, the barrel is not a completely just smooth, it, it's a smooth pen, but it has some lines running down the barrel as well as on the cap. It's got a nice clip. So the pen, in my opinion, is a worthy opponent. I do like Cross. One of my favorite pens. And I have a few other crosses with gold nibs and regular steel nibs. If you're in the market for a nice looking fountain pen, you might want to check this out. The, uh, the things that I'm not so into is the barrel. I like a thicker barrel with more grit to it. And let me show you one if you don't mind. Um, here is the Lamy 2000. And see, I like the grip. It's also smooth like the cross, but it has more grip. This is the kind that I really like. Uh, another one would be uh, a vanishing point. They're about the same length, the vanishing point is, with the vanishing point with some more grip on it. The Pilot Metropolitan is a, about the same size with just a tad more girth than the cross. I'm trying to find one of these pins. Here's a wing song. Almost as long as the cross, but not quite. And about the same in girth with the cross a tad more girth than the wingsaw. And the ink that I'm using today is the Soda Pop. One of my favorite all-time Robert Oster Soda Pop. Just some great ink. If you have never tried Soda Pop Blue by Robert Oyster, I suggest you try some because I think you will be totally impressed with his inks. He's a gentleman out of Australia. There's the color of the ink that I'm using. And I'm trying to do a few matchup. Uh, trying to get close. Here we go. Here's some Robert Oyster Fire and Ice. And here's some Lamy Turquoise. Kind of close to it. And here is the Private Reserve. What is that one? I can't see it. Daphne Blue. So those are just a few colors to give you an idea on the Oyster Soda Pop Blue. Love the ink. I really do. So, a very nice fountain pen. I really like this fountain pen. So, that's going to take care of this video for today. And I, 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 I hope you really 
found this pen interesting and more so I really hope that you understand more about this cross fountain pen and try to get past the chrome on the smudging fingerprint because I'm, I'm really not getting that here. I think once you put this pen in your hand, you're going to see it's going to fit comfortable in your hand. It's a well-balanced pen. It's a versatile pen. You can make it into a roller ball and you can, you know, change the color of the ink. Black, blue, purple. So those are some positive points for this fountain pen. And last but not least, the warranty. I don't think there's a warranty in the world that will stand up to uh, cross. Last but not least, what is under the hood? A small but a mighty beautiful, well-detailed 18K gold medium nib. Well, I hope you enjoy the video and got something out of this cross fountain pen leave your comments below until then be safe my friends stay healthy later